Last time on You Had Me at Bigfoot. Oh, no, wait. Every morning, the Dan- I know this is off topic, and I'm sorry, but every morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, there's a tree in front of my house. The birds oh, no. are singing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking I'm going to poison the tree. <laughs> it already <laughs> is. All the trees in our neighborhood have that virus in it that makes them, when they bloom or uh, blossom. Smell like fish? Well, smell like semen is what they smell like. It smells How like rusty. you know rusty. what semen smells like? You've never jerked off you've and never, it landed on you? You've never smelled your own semen? No! <laughs> how, have you never, how have you never smelled it? Like, <laughs> oh, next thing Dustin's like, oh, how do you know what shit smells like? I've never smelled shit before. Someone here who needs to speak with you, and you're gonna to want to hear this. Officer, this is Special Agent Mulder of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. I'm gonna to have to ask you to listen closely and do everything as I say. Do you copy? Like, uh, wait, did you say Mulder? Like, from the X Files? Yes, I'm Mulder from the friggin' X Files. Now listen closely. Do not exit your vehicle and do not, under any circumstances, attempt to apprehend the suspect. We are en route to your position. You're listening to You Had Me at Bigfoot, your exclusive source for UFO operator maintenance, with your host, Tom, he's got like Bill's palsy or something, yeah. and Dustin, God's special little clown. Join in the studio by musical director, Jim. It's not a handicap. Remember to check out our Twitter, at You Had Me Podcast. Find us on YouTube, You Had Me at Bigfoot Podcast. Or on our website, www.youhadmeatbigfoot.com. Evidently not. All right. <clears throat> so I'm tonight, the sound guy who yeah. To hear me. Anyways. Okay, we're good. Okie doke. So tonight we're actually talking about ghosts. About ghosts. What about Ooh. ghosts? Ghosts. Not goats. The greatest of all time podcast? Yes. Is that what it is? Yes. Is that what well, GOAT I mean, stands for? I never knew goat, what they yeah. actually stood, well, he was like, actually oh, stood for. Like, he's the GOAT, whatever, it's the greatest of all time podcast. I didn't know that. See, I learned something on the podcast, so that's a first. Somebody actually learned something on this podcast. Oh, I was going to tell you this story off air, but we're going to do it on air. Okay, so go I, ahead. I got it for everyone listening and watching. I got a tattoo today for my mom. And as I, as the guy's tatting me, he starts talking about like how his dad's in the conspiracy theories and all this nonsense, right? I was like, well, funny enough, I do a podcast, man. Like where we do like conspiracy theories, paranormal, all this goofy crap. And he's like, oh, no kidding. He's like, we listen to podcasts all the time like that in the in the tattoo shop. He's like, who are you guys with? Like, what's the name of your podcast? And I told him, and he was <laughs> you like, told him someone, you were like, yeah, uh, uh, you had, you had, you had uh, some other Bigfoot. podcast that's not you had <laughs> Bigfoot. So then he had, before we left, he had me write it down and everything. But he was like, oh, and I showed him the website, you know, while still there. He's like, oh, this is awesome looking. Like, are you guys making money off this? And I said, whoa. It looks like we're good based off of our <laughs> website, but we're not that good. Based off of like the one drawing that I've yeah. used for everything across the the entire podcast. But he had like these bat squatch um, stickers, and he was selling them for like two dollars. He's like, if they were mine, I'd give you one. He's like, but if you have stickers or something, bring them up here, man. I'll, I'll sell them for you or nothing else. Plug your show and stuff. So I was like, all right, well, I'll, one day. Do we have to catch up? It's been two weeks. Did you fess up? Did you tell the crowd about how last week we weren't able to uh, record because you took a knee again? Yeah, here's what happened. <laughs> I I was like, you know, one one thirty in the afternoon, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna tell this drunk guy down the road to drive his car and just plow it into the into a transformer and knock all the electric out. First of all, who the hell is that drunk at one thirty in the afternoon? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All three of us, <laughs> except for when you're working. But the the power went out, and it was supposed to be out for like two hours. And I remember uh, texting you, and I'm like, man, what are we going to do? Like, the power's out. And you're like, oh. And I was like, well, it says it's going to be on like at five or six. And you're like, well, it's Duke Energy, so it's going to be out until like 10, dude. Like, watch. And sure as shit, that's yeah. what happened. I'm like the Nostradamus of knowing what time the uh, power is going to come back on. So... 
Let's make sure James is still recording. Not that we absolutely need his audio, but it'd be nice to have it. Um, you know I'm sitting right here. Right? <laughs> is he behind me? <laughs> no, he's in front of you. And we did redecorate the studio, and I, I use the term studio. It's a very grandiose term to use for this place. Uh, W-B-I-G, the foot studio. And... Uh, so any kind of new accessories you see, the treadmill that we don't use, obviously. But yeah, it's been a uh, pretty eventful two weeks. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's let's get to talking about ghosts. I, I, I know some people probably know that uh, I used to ghost hunt. James, I'm looking forward to hearing some of your stories about ghost hunting because honestly, you used to tell me that you went ghost hunting. And you would say, do you want to hear a fun story about it? And I'd say no. And then you'd have to sit there on your story and not tell it to anybody. So I'm looking forward to some of your more interesting stories today. Uh, but we are going to kind of talk. We've never, we do a show about the paranormal, about Bigfoots, about aliens, about ghosts, about, and we've never talked about ghosts. I mean, we've kind of touched on the topic, which reminds me, are you going to boot up your Ovulus box? Yeah, I will. Do you want me to do it like right now? Sure. Uh, does, that, does that mean I have to re-download mine? No, you don't have to. No worries. We don't have to have <laughs> dueling um, <laughs> ovuluses or whatever. Uh, but is we're, dueling ovuluses anything like dueling banjos? I a little bit. Remember, like yours was fighting uh, Dustin's. <laughs> come, come get some. Yours was like the yeah, Duke I, Nukem of ghosts. Yeah, but like, would it would it sound anything like only a ghost doing it? Maybe. Can you imagine it on, but it's only like a MIDI on the phone, so it's got that robotic twang to it where it's like, burm, 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 but it's only got like one note, so it's just the same note over and over again, dueling uh, electronic ghost box. Okay. All right, we've got the ovulus going, so we'll see if any ghosts want to join us today. So spirits in this house, this is your show. I'm stirring it up, and it's Go ahead. Me, but it's your fault, really, because you've been. I dealt- did. I, and I, <laughs> yeah, and I encouraged the the ghost activity and the demonic activity by. Crowd. So we're running the ovulus. We're trying to get some ghosts to come out and join us on the show. So, um, ghosts. We haven't talked about ghosts. We've kind of like touched on them a little bit, but we haven't really talked about what a ghost is. And I know at some point a while ago we did. Uh, we did, we did kind of talk about what would you ask a Ouija board, <laughs> but let's do this. If we had a ghost come and sit down next to you like at that uh, Haunted Mansion ride in Disney World, <laughs> uh, what would you ask it? What would you ask a ghost who visited us on the show and agreed to be a guest? What's the afterlife like? And this is supposed to be funny. <laughs> What's <laughs> that? <laughs> Doesn't we're here like, well, have you, oh, oh, who killed JFK? It's what's supposed to be the answer, but and as a ghost, can you probe somebody in the butthole, or can you be probed in the butthole still as a ghost? You know what? There's a whole thing about that uh, about ghosts having sex with people. Have you heard about that? Yeah. And well, I mean, there's obviously the incubus and the succubus, the demons that have sex with people but apparently ghosts have sex with people but women are accusing ghosts of causing them to have orgasms while they sleep but in reality it's just like an orgasm while you're sleeping so like a sensitive vagina right have you ever had like a nocturnal emission that's that's a good question dustin have you ever had a nocturnal emission i.e like a wet dream yeah what were you thinking about when it happened? What you? were you dreaming about? <laughs> you and that beard? <laughs> <laughs> was it Am I nuzzling, right? <laughs> nuzzling up to it with um, my beard. <laughs> yes. I did, you know, uh, I've had that happen before, and I'll, I'll be serious. I, I did. I woke up one time, and it's like when you're a young boy, mm-hmm. it's surprising. Like it's it's something that oh, you so don't. Oh, so you were a young boy. I was. I mean, well, the first time it happened. Yeah. I mean, like the last time it happened was a couple nights ago. Yeah. But uh, the first time it happened, I mean, it's certainly like I don't blame kids for being surprised or uncomfortable when it happens because you might think that. You, you know, you're a young you're a young boy and you ejaculate, and especially if you know what that is, uh, you might think that it was a ghost, right? But it's not. It's, Do you remember the first maybe. time you ejaculated? No, I remember the early times. I remember back in the day, back in the early <laughs> times. I was talking. Haley? Haley. Do you know a Haley, James? Haley? Haley who? My father. 
Haley, my father. We're getting. You're not even paying attention to the ovulus, and it's going nuts. We've had. It is questions? going nuts. We've had. We've got Haley and my father. Um. All right. All right. All right. All right. I need to. Uh, I need to ask a question. How? Um. I. I can share any story on this, right? Yeah, I don't care. I mean, as long as like, you don't care. Yeah. But well, like you, you know the specific incident that I'm thinking of, right? Or the specific thing about me that I wonder if you want me bringing up on the show? I don't care what you bring up on the show. Uh, I, I know of what you're talking. I think I know what you're talking okay. about. But go ahead. Okay, I don't so, think anyone's gonna. So it really freaked me out when you said Haley, my father, because Haley was the name of the girl that I made out with that caused me to get kicked out of the of the Air Force. And her father was the one who was super, you know, made made damn sure that I got, I got the worst. Damn. Did did she die? Is she dead? It just said all. <laughs> He's taking all the credit. Let's do Zach Baggins or my alter ego, my oh ghost my hunting. <laughs> oh my god! He just said all. My, He's getting it right. Listen, I was about to say my my ghost hunting alter ego is Fat Baggins. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like an overweight, less fit uh, Zach Baggins, and uh, so I was about to do the whole. Could it mean that Haley, her father, took all the credit? For what happened to James, <laughs> so that's he that's. Deserves all the credit. Yeah. So welcome to He's Fat Baggins <laughs> Ghost Adventures with Fat Baggins, and what would, what's the other guy's name? Aaron. 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 Whatever. Good, Goodwin. Good, Goodwin. Goodwin. Yeah. See, how do I know more and about then, it than uh, you do? When you're the one who's over there sucking Zach Baggins' dick, oh, I love his him. ghost dick. He just said decapitated. <laughs> Which is what they wanted to do. I'm gonna look up on YouTube to see if, or uh, YouTube, <laughs> Facebook to see if uh, Haley's dad got decapitated. That would be... I hope I find it. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Uh, we've asked the question. You would something about sucking the ghost dick if he were were on the show right now? Sure. Okay. Uh, is the answer. I don't remember honestly what we talked about five minutes ago. I have like squirrel brain. I said, can ghosts. Do can a, ghosts be fingered in the butthole? Or can they finger a butthole? Yes. How many fingers do you think? How many it's, ghost fingers? It's three, right? Three. We decided yeah, we that decided last week. We had fans actually determine that it was three fingers. So let's move on. What about what about ghosts? There are multiple types of ghosts, right? Yeah. So what's uh, what's one type of ghost? The see-through kind. I, I obviously <laughs> meant like, you know, we have residual... We have intelligent. We have poltergeist. We have uh, shadow people. We have which, what else? We have demonic, demonic, which are not actually ghosts. That's a totally different. I, and I've thing. heard the shadow people. If you watch uh, Supernatural, the shadow people are bad and mamma jammas. Is that right? I've never watched that show. I'm aware that I, they have I like everything off TV shows. That I know. <laughs> so let's talk about residual haunts. Let's let's answer this question first. Let's put this out to the fan. What? do you think a ghost is right i mean i used to you know when i used to ghost hunt my dad who was a minister used my father as the ghost would say used to it just uh, said saw <laughs> it's what do we think a ghost is it can be a demon okay so so we're on the same page here and this is <laughs> this is my guy i don't know his name but he's my guy uh he, he's a reptoid hunter and he's like super knowledgeable about reptoids and i'll keep talking about how i want to bring him on the show but he doesn't have a microphone or whatever so a ghost can be a demon that's what he used to tell me he used to get on to me all the time and he'd say you know what you're dealing with is not actually dead people what you're dealing with is actually a demon mm -hmm. and that's where i disagreed with him a lot Lot because uh, you know when when they talk about and, and him being a minister obviously I had to relay back to talking about what what's in the Bible to kind of argue with him intelligently uh, when they saw Jesus on the water they called they said he was like a ghost he looked like a ghost and why would they have that term if there wasn't such a thing right so that was always my argument so a ghost can I, I think what you're saying is a ghost can be a demon, but I think what it is is a demon can present itself as a ghost, uh, more so just to, like as a, like a way to trick you into engaging with it, talking with it, interacting with it, whatever. Well, um, um, you know what he told me when I asked him that question, what a ghost was? He said that uh, it's a demon pretending to be your dead grandma 
because you're gonna see your dead grandma and be like, oh, there must not be an afterlife because grandma's still right here. Right, so and that's it's, it's demons pretending to uh, to trick you. Norman. Norman. <laughs> I don't know any Norman, so. That'd be funny uh, if, that like was, if that was Haley's dad's name. <laughs> He's like really trying to get this point across. He's like, come on! The, guy, <laughs> the guy's name is Norman. Uh, I'm going to find someone on her Facebook friends list. I'm not friends with her on Facebook. Well, why not? <laughs> because you have a, a 50 foot uh, restriction or something. <laughs> um, but no, but yeah, that's that's what. It, that's exactly what we were saying was they can present themselves as a sign like a way to trick you into believing whatever and and, and that's a good plan i mean it's, it's a brilliant plan as far as i'm concerned but so there's demons can present themselves as ghosts so if you encounter a ghost it could very well be a demon if that makes sense and hopefully that uh, hopefully we've been able to kind of clear that one up head head and we we're talking about decapitations a minute ago People also say that this is people who can't leave this plane. And that's another thing that I do want to talk about is I think that there are instances in which case an errand in which a somebody just gets lost on the way. Um, you know, when you have you ever gone someplace new, like you're trying to talk to your friend, like, hey, come over to this place. We're out here on whatever route and da 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 da. And then you don't know how to get there. Like, mm-hmm. in the time, especially for us older folks who there was a time before GPS, uh, we had to use like MapQuest, and even before then we had to use an atlas. And even before then, you know, we had to consult with our you know 17th century cartographers and, and try to talk to them, to try to figure out how to get someplace. So like when you're going someplace and you don't know how to get there, say your GPS goes down and you panic, right? Because you don't know how to get there, you don't know what you're looking for. You are guilty. Dude, this shit's lining up on, uh... <laughs> that, guy, that ghost is talking. He is carrying on. We'll talk to him directly in a minute. Hold, hold, hold on, ghost. I don't um, want to. <laughs> I'm gonna shut him up real quick. <laughs> um... You'll challenge the spirits of the shadow realm again. Yeah, but imagine like the panic that courses through your body whenever your GPS goes down. You're in the middle of nowhere. That's I, I gotta believe that that's kind of the same situation that happens when you die. You're like, what do I do now? And that's why I believe when we were talking to Angela a couple weeks ago, she was uh, saying that kids tend to be the most likely to stick around because they need that guidance. They need that parental, you know, somebody to hold their hand and walk them through so they get lost. And I, I think that happens a lot more often than I think it happens, period. So I, I do agree with you. So moving on, let's talk about the actual specifics now that we're about an hour into the show and we haven't actually even talked about ghosts. Uh, so there's residual haunts, okay? What is that? What do you think the residual haunt is? Well, it's, it, it, you know, there's they say that certain stone or wood absorbs this energy from past events and it's just residual hauntings or it just continues to play over and 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 over. It's not intelligent. It, it won't answer your questions. It doesn't know you're there. It just goes through its motions. So from from what I've gathered over the years, what we do know is that energy is not created nor is it destroyed. It just continues to be. It just changes form and all that. So when something dies, that energy's got to go somewhere. So... I think that has a lot to do with it. I do think that in a lot of cases, uh, residual haunting is people who have the same routine over and over and over again. It just creates kind of an imprint on that particular space. So imagine like, uh, you know, somebody who comes down the stairs every morning at eight o'clock in the morning, you know, that energy is imprinted on that particular space for, uh, yeah, what, like 50 years or whatever? So, I mean, it could very likely just end up becoming a a visual aid that becomes, like you said, it's not intelligent. When I die, if someone comes to my house, like into my bedroom or bathroom or something... (laughs) It'll see a dust and just... Just me wanking off. Just wanking it off. (laughs) Just sitting on the toilet, beating it to uh, tranny porn. Tranny tentacle midget porn. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there will be a little, uh, a, like a laptop, an image of a see-through laptop with tentacle porn and... Yeah, midgets. Uh, and midgets. Key is midgets. With penises. Large penises. <laughs> How big is a midget penis? Dude. I hear they're big. 
I mean, you can see some big ones out there. Uh, so, and then what about intelligent? I mean, that seems like a pretty obvious one. I mean, they're the ones that interact. Intelligent hauntings could be covered under a lot of different categories. There. I think there's a lot of, yeah, I think that falls under, I think the intelligent haunt, it, it kind of branches off, like you said. Yeah, I think, because it could be demons, could be an actual person who died and uh, whatever. Could be a lot of things. But I do believe in ghosts full heartedly. Whatever, maybe, the, you know, whatever it be, the case may be, I believe that there are spirits and just experiences I've had, experiences you've had. Some things are unexplained. Are you trying to end the show already? No. <laughs> You're like, well, uh, I give it five big foots. I no, give I, ghosts in general five big I foots. I think a poltergeist <laughs> is smart. I think poltergeist is an intelligent haunting. Tell me what you think about poltergeist, and then I'll tell you. To me, a, poltergo- a poltergeist... A poltercock? A poltercock. <laughs> yeah, I guess what's, what's on Dustin's mind. Like, <laughs> <laughs> a poltergeist could be... Uh, any. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't necessarily think it's just its own individual ghost like oh you can do these things so this makes you in that category I, a, a, to me a poltergeist could be is any incident incidents where a ghost can move an object can slide your glass off the table can open a door can move objects or disrupt the environment I politely disagree with you <laughs> We're supposed to be more confrontational. No, I, I do. I politely disagree with you because, uh, yeah, the ghost said across. You're coming across yeah. as wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you why. No, uh, I think that's a that's a reasonable uh, belief, and I believe I'm sure there are people who agree with you wholeheartedly. But I will say that a poltergeist in German is just noisy ghost. That's all it means. Um, but. A poltergeist is actually the manifestation of... Okay, let me preface this by saying I believe. This is not like something I read in a, you know, like a like a actual college textbook or something. Whatever, doctor. Um, <laughs> uh, a poltergeist is a like a manifestation of telepathic energy. So when you're a kid, okay, and you are going through puberty, and you are to some degree psychic. I think everyone has a little bit of psychic ability, but I think if you're not using it, it has to find an outlet. So what it does is it leaves you and it's gonna go find something else to do. Now, I've had an internal struggle about this, whether or not it's just like a burst of, you know, telepathic energy that's just knocking stuff over, or if it's an intelligent uh, manifestation of energy. And I think it's the latter, because I, I know I've talked uh, on the show a little bit about... All I know is we start talking about poltergeist and my phone just started going banana crazy, dude. So we've, <laughs> we've touched on something. I, I know I've talked on the show about how different types of energies could very possibly be the reason for different types of haunts, i.e. like thermal energy becomes residual haunts. Uh, intelligent energy comes from electronic energy. Uh, and then as far as poltergeist, that comes from telepathic energy. So I think it's just another form of energy that goes into creating another type of ghost. Uh, And also, I I actually just heard on, um, I was watching Paranormal Witness the other day. Uh, I I know a lot of you guys think that I don't spend, like I go out and I spend my days doing normal shit. But like I go and I watch. I don't think that at all. (laughs) Well, I know you don't because you know I don't. But (laughs) I spend most of my days watching, you know, ghost shows. and. You just said female. Female. Uh, James, do you have any examples of <laughs> situations with a female? Um, uh, yeah, it's coming soon. <laughs> but the um, that's what she said. No nice. way, you said nice. female. I thought you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think poltergeists are just another type of energy manifesting as another type of ghost, and that particular ghost is like just like a really, uh, you know, just wants to trash the place, wants to do damage, wants to knock stuff over. But what if that's not what they want to do? Crunch. What, what maybe if- they're just like really they're just giant like, no, and they like, can't like hang no, on what to if this, stuff so they break They're it. like, this is how I can communicate. The best way I can make you believe that I'm here is move this shit around. Have you ever had poltergeist activity? Not to my knowledge. I have. I mean, because, well, okay, let me tell <laughs> a story. James has. You tell me if this is poltergeist. I don't think it is, but you tell me. So when my grandpa died, I was at my grandma's house. They, they, had, they all left to go to the funeral home, right? They had went to the funeral home already, came back, brought paperwork back, 
and then they was taking his suit up to the funeral home. And I'm in his bedroom, like looking at some of his stuff, like what you do when someone dies, you whatever. You root through their shit yeah, looking you, for stuff. Yeah. You do shit you would never <laughs> done when they were alive. Where do you keep your porn magazines? <laughs> <laughs> so then I hear uh, like papers ruffling on the table. I'm home alone. No one else is there. So what's like to me? That was my grandpa. Like looking what's through. What's the his, difference? He's also. He's like, I better find that porn before yeah, Dustin. I gotta does. find this. Or he's like, I gotta show him where it's at before my every other people find it. So what's the difference between a poltergeist and uh, you tell me, uh, Reptoid Hunter, <laughs> whose name I still don't. Well, know. there's um, there's a YouTube video of a dude that's in England who's had poltergeist. Yeah, that yes. guy's always getting harassed And by his shit's like, I've watched his shit from the very first video. Chicken something or another. Oh, that's not his name. But I've watched his videos from the <laughs> first video that he's ever put on. And it's just, he's moved houses and it's followed him. Yeah. And he's like even done things where he's like trying to prove to you that he's not moving these yeah, objects. Yeah, he has cameras set up. But let's yeah. talk to, let's reach out to Reptoid Hunter. Uh, what is the difference between an intelligent haunt and a, and a poltergeist haunt? Uh, because that's a difficult question. How do we know? Maybe it's not... Resp- our poltergeists probably aren't responsive. It's not like they do respond when you're like, hey, knock it off. Or it's not like you can say, hey, knock over this shit off the wall or whatever, and they do it. They just do it. They're just like, you know, cranky. They're, See, that's, that's what the I'm best saying. way like, I, I like to describe them. Because they're that, cranky. They do their own thing. That guy whose videos I'm talking about... Yeah, is our terror. But he, gets, he gets EVPs in his house. Does he? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't get a ton of them, but he does, he, he does like, um, Ovilus sessions and EVP sessions, and he gets EVPs and all this is, and, um, I, don't, I mean... Poltergeists that react. But how do you know it's different from an intelligent his, haunt? I gotta tell you what the name of this guy is. I gotta find his videos. There's another video on YouTube, and I think I've shared it on the, on the, on the Twitter page, uh, of, like, a, an office building where it gets just terrorized by a poltergeist. I, and, and see, that's kind of what we're talking about is are they doing it to terrorize the person and scare the person away or are they doing it just be, as like a means of communication or like how I'm imagining it in my head is like a giant ghost who's just trying to like pick up glasses, but he's got big old fingers. So everything breaks when he touches it or when he walks through a room, he's just knocking shit over. Like, what, how do we know the difference between a poltergeist and an intelligent haunting? Uh, I guess is the question that we should relate to uh, just anyone who knows more about this than Michael, we do. Michael McGee. But what's his thing called? My, his channel's Michael D. McGee. No, I'm thinking of a different guy then. Yeah, this guy. There's another guy. Yeah, but how do you... So with Poltergeist, um, a smart hot is a dead person that actually reacts to people. But again, how do we know... Like, it's not just, like, an angry, intelligent haunt versus a poltergeist. And poltergeists do seem to react in a way of, like, uh, somebody just bursting through a room, knocking as much stuff over as they can. Poltergeists, they react like a bull in a china shop. So it's not like you can jump in there. No, I'm thinking of a different guy. There's a different guy who well, has, look at like, it. I see it. I'm, I'm well aware that there are people with, like, some... Oh, does he get footprints? Yeah. But how do we deter- how do we find out if an intelligent haunt is not a poltergeist? Because say you say knock three times and knocks three times, but then three seconds later it knocks something off a shelf. How do we know? Like a lot of those, there are too many parallels. I think that run with intelligent hauntings. Watch and that uh, <laughs> let me find the other guy, and you talk for a minute while I. Uh, Find this other guy because there's another guy who like y- you'll enjoy his stuff. Here, you're gonna find all my porn. Well, I'm looking for your porn. I can't find it. Okay, there we go. Um, talk to the people. They're waiting. I am for a real. She said what he said. Yeah. So, and that's what like I think that po- poltergeist can follow you. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm just looking at your porn. Oh, no, you weren't kidding. There's midget uh, tranny porn. Mid- midget tranny porn. Um, Tentacle porn. I'm that's gonna open up your my story of a, of a poltergeist experience. Yeah, you tell us your story. Okay. Uh, so this was this was a few years ago. Well, a lot of years ago, actually. When I was living out in Orange County, uh, I was working as a real estate developer. And uh, my wife stayed home with our kids, Dana, Robbie, and uh, Carol Ann. <laughs> and... Uh, 
one night, uh, Carol Ann was just looking at the TV. It was just static. She was just watching the TV like crazy. And uh, there was a big earthquake. And uh, Carol looks up and she and she said, they're here. Uh, I didn't really know what was going on, but, you know, over the next few days, it started to get really weird. Like, there was a drinking glass that broke. Uh, silverware was starting to bend on its own. Furniture was moving around. Uh, it seemed really benign at first, but quickly uh, began to intensify. And uh, that night, uh, there was a gnarled backyard tree uh, just came to life and grabbed Robbie through the window. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about the movie well, Poltergeist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mellow Bird. The guy's name is Mellow Bird. Okay, so it's uh, Mellow, M E L L O W B, the number one. RD. So if you go watch his stuff, he's got some real crazy stuff on there about uh, times where like, and like his kitchen, like he's got a real cranky uh, poltergeist that just knocks like, it, like throws stuff all over the kitchen. Yeah. He's a lot of fun to watch so you should totally check out his uh, you should check out his stuff. But yeah, so we need to figure out what the difference is between a intelligent haunt or how to determine if you've got just like a real cranky uh, intelligent haunting versus a poltergeist so um and then moving on what do we have we have shadow people what do you think of the shadow people i think they're evil i think shadow they people suck. i think <laughs> i think shadow people are demons think so yeah because when you hear about bad shit like people being like i got scratched i got touched something pinched my behind something pruned my butthole it always starts <laughs> i don't hear about those latter two but oh, whatever well it always starts with i saw a shadow i feel like i saw, I saw a shadow or i feel like i felt a shadow coming up behind me or i saw this big always, shadow figure it always starts with seeing a shadow and then the next thing you know you got fingers in your butt you're getting and, your butt uh, pinched, stuff like that. You're that's, trying to count them. You're trying to count them all. <laughs> well, that's what happens in jail. So, <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, so I, I know I talk about this. The ones that get you in dreams, or the ones among us in the shadows. Like we're talking about the real in in person shadow people, like the ones that uh, you you catch them more often than not on camera, more often than anything else. I, anytime I relay stuff, that's kind of like out there or like not in the same sentence that I'm working on it's because I'm quoting Reptoid Hunter because I, I, I utilize him as like a source of viable information uh, so I, and I talk about this all the time and I don't want to preach I don't want to be that guy who like became a police officer and then all he does is talk about becoming a police officer you mm -hmm. know oh that reminds me of this 1095 that I responded to last week but I, I am training to become an exorcist right and I am awkward uh Hmm. Uh, and I am doing a lot of studying on that topic and I am doing a lot of like I've been messing with the pineal gland and all that and, 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 and I've seen a lot of activity ramp up every time you say you're messing with the pineal gland I think you're jerking off <laughs> well, that's also how I call that's also what I call jerking off so it, you could be one or the other so I was in the shower the other day messing with the pineal gland <laughs> and um, but no I, the one thing that I've seen really ramp up uh, among other things I mean I get a lot of like the normal like the poltergeist D activity the intelligent haunting like the you know the stuff that I got like the doors slamming and stuff. I would argue right now, if there's a spirit here right now, knock something off this wall. Hey, he's a he's a Native American. He doesn't uh, he doesn't do that kind of thing. <laughs> then let me do the the spirit dance. Whoa. Oh come on, come on! We're turning this show into the, we're gonna get an FCC warning somehow on Periscope. Um, <laughs> You're insulting. Hello. Him. He's not going to answer. Dances police and exorcist. Not I'm not a police officer. Yeah. I'm, let me let me oh, say. I don't second. want to be stolen valor. I don't want to be stolen valor. <laughs> but uh, wait a second. No, I'm saying. I, I am in law enforcement, and you are an exorcist. I and and I. <laughs> yeah, it was because I, I said that comment about being police, yeah. or I don't want to be that police officer. I, I will say that once all that stuff started ramping up, the one thing that really did kick up an awful lot. And I'm very like cognizant of like what's going on around me. I'm very like uh, you know attention to detail as far as that concerned. The one thing that did ramp up is the shadows out of the corner of my eye, out of the you know. So so I will say that the shadows picked up. So to say the shadow people are demonic or possibly demonic, 
I think that that's a very reasonable assumption because that's the one thing that I can attribute. When stuff is going on, typically I'm seeing the out of the peripheral. It's never like right in front of me. Uh, it's it's always in the peripheral to where I look, and that's not something that I used to experience particularly uh, a lot. So when that sort of stuff started ramping up, it was noticeable more, you know, and, and I always joke about having the one plus seven. Uh, my demonic activity around me has really ramped up. So the shadow people being demonic, I can I can appreciate that. Uh, the more you believe or think of the supernatural, the more you will can experience. So and that's and that goes into a lot of things where like children, when we talk about children experiencing more paranormal, because they don't know better. Uh, as you grow up, your parents would tell you, ah, oh, there's no such thing as a boogeyman, there's no such thing as ghosts, there's no such thing as monsters, but there are. But once you start hearing that, your brain subconsciously tunes it out. So I think that's what a lot of times happens with children. And like you said, the more you start reading into it, the more you start believing it, the more you start paying attention to it, the more likely you are going to see it. And I think that's a lot of times, or what, what a lot has been happening as far as with studying uh, exorcism and all that. I've kind of opened myself up to it again. And it's really, like I said, kicked it up again. So... That being said, I think we're going to take a real quick intermission. I know uh, Dustin has to go put the seat down and take a piss. So uh, we will be right back. (laughs) Don't go nowhere. Are you interested in advertising on You Had Me at Bigfoot? No friggin' way. Under no circumstances. Reach out to us at contact at youhadmeatbigfoot.com. It's not like it physically... It's Mike in Manitoba is the first one back on. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you. Mike! We were just talking about how you're... We were just talking about you in general. Yeah, so we're just waiting for... Oh, we've already got three three fans? Oh, my goodness. I'm, we're rolling in it today. All right, so we're going to start off the second, the second half uh, with a story from James, actually. Uh, he's going to tell us about... He's going to sing us a song about the times that he uh, had gone ghost hunting in the past. So, enjoy. I've actually got a song. I just said that. I wrote... Oh. I've got a song that I wrote uh, about the first time I ever went ghost hunting. First uh, ghost I experienced. And I want to dedicate this one to, uh, to my friend from Manitoba. Take your time. All right, I'll fast forward. <laughs> if I leave here tomorrow... That's not even where the singing starts. You know, know what the thing is? I was going to start lip syncing so people would think that it was me singing, but I was like, that is awful. I was like, I'm glad I didn't start when yeah, you started. I was going to say, I wish you would have. <laughs> Used to be like, no, it wasn't me. It was Tom. This one's for Mike. So, okay, go ahead and tell us your story about uh, time. Whatever you were telling a story about. He was telling us a story in the intermission about this time that he hooked up with a guy in the Philippines. There's nothing wrong with that. I didn't know it was a guy until it was too late. <laughs> until until it was over, and then you're like, wait, <laughs> I don't remember hey, there look, being a supposed if, to be a dick if, in me. If you had to walk a mile in my shoes. I'm too drunk for this. <laughs> I wrote a song about 10 seconds from now about ghost hunting. Let's hear it. It's been a while since we've had an original James song. I think we. Yeah, and I was. Honestly, as you were saying that, I went back to my original starting chord, and I was like, but you know, the last time I, I did a song, it was the same chords. So maybe I'll switch it up. Nah. Oh, I dropped my thing. 
Huh? I've had a, for, for the fan, I've had an entire bottle of rum. You've got five fans here waiting for you to sing a song. They're, yelling, they're booing at you. One of them, in fact, booed at you a minute ago. Ooh. I can't see it because it's not, it's not refreshing. <laughs> you know, I don't care. <laughs> you have to like, open up the new one. Really hates me. You have to open up the new one. Anyways, just play your song. In the words of Limp Biscuit, <laughs> play the fucking track. Oh, you know what? It keeps replaying the old. There we go. All right. The ghost is left. He's no longer even trying. <laughs> he, well, we said in our mission, he bounced. No. You can come back now. Come back, you. When you mess with the paranormal, you never know what's gonna happen. Sometimes it starts real normal, then shit really starts to happen. <laughs> How many fingers? Go! What? So you said I wonder how many fingers a ghost can use, and my obvious thing said all of them. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Take a screenshot. <laughs> Hang on, I want to sing a. I want to play a song directly for the ghost. Oh, I was listening. You ready? Well, I don't know how your phone works. All right, I'll send this to you, so you can put it on the. You can't challenge a ghost to Mortal Kombat. That's not how it works. Gabriella. Uh, do you know a Gabriella, James? I do. I actually almost... Well, no, it was Gabriella. It was with a V, but it was pronounced Gabriella. Stupid but I, ghost. I almost dated her when I got in trouble, and she found out that I got in trouble and she didn't want to date me anymore. So, fuck you, ghost. <laughs> you can't even spell right. The um. <laughs> so... Moving on from that, let's talk about your actual experience. What you don't have to sing it, unless you want to play like in the background. If you want to play the Far, far Cry music, that would be fine. But the um, because we can always take a, another hit on YouTube. The uh, for using copyrighted music. Tell us about that time that you went ghost hunting and you were wearing that cowboy hat. And I need to find the picture of because it's it will go great with the other pictures of you with the cowboy hat on. Well, I'll tell a real story. I wasn't wearing a cowboy hat at the time. There was a picture of you. I I know there was of you wearing a cowboy hat in an, a like a, a blown up car at a haunted house. But go ahead. All right. So my uh, I mean the start of that song was actually true. We went to a La Palazza mansion in Las Vegas which is where Ghost Adventures went, they had a lot of activity. But um, we actually, we went there and we broke in, we went around the back, then we broke in. Well, we didn't have to break in because it was already broken in because a bunch of stoners used to hang out there. That tells you how, uh, how low the bar is for Ghost Adventures. They go to places where stoners hang out. 
But um, if anyone's familiar with La Palazza Mansion, it was a big episode that they had, and it's a big haunted place. It was owned by a bunch of mafia members out in Las Vegas. And they had like a, they supposedly had like a secret room there where they would, uh, I don't know, kill people or whatever. And um, it was like a hidden room that didn't have a door. It had like a secret doorway to get in. But we were going through the house, and it was all, they were re- redoing the house, so all the walls were taken down. There were just the frames up. But the, the room was supposedly attached to the kitchen, but there wasn't a doorway leading to it. It was like a secret entrance. And with the frames up, you could still see where the doors were supposed to be. And there was a small room off to the side of where the kitchen would have been, because all the you could still see where the kitchen would have been and where bathrooms were and stuff like that. And uh, there was a small room attached to where the kitchen would have been that didn't have an actual door frame leading into it. And uh, it just looked like there were walls up surrounding the entire room. And there was just one small drain in the center of the room. So we, were, we assumed that's where the, the secret room was, where they where they killed people. Because it would have had a drain in the center of its drain of blood or whatever. And uh, But anyways, we went through the entire house. And we had a couple of weird things happen. One time we uh, we hooked up, we set up a phone, and we set it in the middle of the room, and we were asking EVP questions and stuff, or you know doing like an EVP session, and asking questions. And we didn't get any, we didn't hear anything at the time, but listening to the recordings afterwards, the one girl, like we didn't get any direct answers to questions that we were intentionally asking the ghosts, but after we had pretty much given up on trying to talk to the ghost. One of the girls was like, geez, I wonder how many rooms are in this house. And there was, uh, when we reviewed the uh, the audio afterwards, you could hear it like a small whisper saying seven, like really, really deep and kind of muffled. Then you could hear that voice a couple of times later on, not really replying to questions, but just kind of interrupting. And so that was weird. And then we went back a second time after that because we figured out oh, we actually had something. Let's go back again. And we did that flashlight trick where you take a flashlight with a little twist top, then you twist it so it's almost on, but it's not quite on. And this is the weirdest thing that ever happened while we were ghost hunting. We had the flashlight there, and you just had to turn it a little bit counterclockwise to make it go on. And um, so we had the flashlight in the middle of the room, and we were asking a bunch of questions. And or first we were like, just turn the flashlight head to make the light come on. Uh, turn it on for yes, and then you know turn it back off, and then don't turn it on for no. And we we asked a few questions, and nothing happened. And my buddy Chris was finally like, try turning it the other direction. And the flashlight immediately came on when he said that. And from then on, every question we asked, we got a little turn of the flashlight. Like we asked, do you get do you get angry when people come into your house? And the flashlight came on. And then he was like, all right, turn it back off. And it went off. And then we have it all on video somewhere. My buddy Chris has it. We don't really talk anymore. I'd love to get a hold of the footage. But we asked if, it wanted, if the spirit wanted us to leave and the flashlight came on. And then he told us to turn it back off and everything. But after we had left that night, or after we were leaving the house, everyone else left and they were already out of the little yard. And I went back up to the front door and I was like, I had asked a bunch of questions and you know, tried to piss off the ghost to try and get a reaction and nothing yank. happened other than the flashlight. <laughs> See where it's a yank. So, so I went up to the front door as we were leaving and I went and I banged on the front door and I was like, oh, you're too scared to do anything, huh, ghost? Well, you lost your chance. And I turned around and started walking back away from the door, and I heard a really loud bang on the other side of the door. And I've never run so fast away from something <laughs> in my life. But uh, ever since then, I like I'd start seeing, um, you know, more and more. You know, you see shadows out of the corner of your eye and stuff when you're home alone and stuff like that. Ever since that night, I started seeing more and more of those shadows, like in that apartment that we went home to. And so that was probably my weirdest thing ever. And then after that, I went up to Virginia City in Nevada, which is supposedly one of the haunted, one of the most haunted places in America. It's where all the guys from the uh, the shootout at the OK Corral, where they all went to hide out afterwards and stuff like that. So it's got a real, a real big history to that city, Virginia City. <laughs> like how you're and really like, 
Then I accidentally spent the night in the most haunted room in that uh, in the most haunted hotel in that city. I didn't know until that, the, like the following day when I went to check out. They're like, "Oh, by the way, that was the the room where you know this this woman killed herself in, and then her boyfriend came and he killed himself in the same room because he found out that she killed herself." But nothing happened when I was up there. I was kind of bummed. You know how some stories are kind of short, and then some stories are kind of long. You know how that happens sometimes? Yeah, some of them just kind of suck. And don't have a real <laughs> <laughs> the um, no, that's uh, I thought you had more interesting stories about ghost hunting. I was wrong though. I guess time makes fools of us all. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you need to end all your stories. Is just with that. You know what? I wrote another song actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear your song. Okay. Is this one going to be good or? Yeah. Okay. Wait, hang on. Remind me to tell my story about how I got beat up by a demon the other day. I told you about that. Right? I got knocked out. Yeah, by you told it. <laughs> I'll tell that story. Oh, what is that the same? Hold on. Show the camera. Today, to see if I still feel a focus on the day. He's the that's only it. thing. That's crazy. Tom's I mean. gay. <laughs> the um the ovulus said cut before you or like right when you started singing. Like no joke. So while we're talking about ghost stories, interesting ghost stories, I joke about on my Twitter it says that I'm O for one in fights with demons or fight with fights with ghosts or whatever. Um, Don is what it says now. Yeah, I think Don Knotts is here. But um, <laughs> the uh, I was I'll tell the story real quick for the group. I was uh, I oftentimes when I work on the podcast I'll, and I do the editing and stuff like that, I'll sit on the bathroom floor and I'll just do it right there because I can like. I'll use it as an excuse. I'm like, well, I'm going to go take a shower. Are you going to play this song for me while I tell the story? Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I'll sit there on the floor, and I'll be working on the computer. And I w- as I was sitting there, I was like, well, i got to take a piss. So I kneeled. I got up, and I was like kneeling there, and I was taking a piss. And uh, out of nowhere, I got just socked by I don't know what and I, you know it wasn't like a uh, like a physical hit the best way I can describe it is as if like everything inside of you moves but the outside of you doesn't move so like uh, when you say you have a bunch of shit in like a, like a little like hollow egg or something and as it moves the momentum of the stuff inside still keeps moving but the outside of the shell doesn't move it was kind of like that but it took me out like it clean took me out and uh, embarrassingly enough as I went down I like fell flat on the toilet and claw like clocked my head on the toilet like Doc Brown and Back to the Future and it was just this really embarrassing like uh, get, getting knocked out it's like getting beat up by a bully or whatever except for uh, uh, it was like I couldn't see what hit me and uh, that was it wasn't the first experience I've had with like physical contact from uh, supernatural forces but it was certainly the most powerful and like the only one that's ever knocked me out um, but yeah that was uh, that's my story about how I got my ass kicked by a ghost one time do you have one of where you got hit by a ghost or no no I've never been like I know you've told stories about ghost experiences yeah um, I've got a lot. Oh, see, we have a we have a listener who was talking about how she got poked in the back when she was nine, right? So it's very it's weird when you get uh, interacted with by a ghost or a demon or something like that. Anyone else have any stories that they want to share with the with the with the group over here before we move on to the next part? The three people. <laughs> All three people. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? I mean, I, Mike yeah. from Manitoba. You Mike, got anything? Mike. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I have a lot. I mean, I, I've had so many experiences. Um, 
Let me th- try to think of one that's really that you haven't told on here before. Yeah, I don't think there's. I mean, we've, we've had things happen here, man. Like talking about the tattoo. The ta- our tell tat- us, tell about the tattoo. Talk about that. So I have this tattoo of Jesus across, you know. And even right now, it's kind of every time we record down here, this tattoo, the ink bump, bump, bumps up on it. Uh, Uh, this one time me and my buddy we were uh, walking down a long dark road <laughs> a long and lonesome road well, a long and lonesome road and now out, out of the shadows came the came the snarls of a of a beast and he said and he said but no his uh, his Jesus tattoo will flare up and he's always like when we leave the, or when we turn off the show and yeah, everything, we stop like recording, he's like, always rubbing on it. And I, well, the one day I asked him about it, and he said, every time we come down to record, just this one tattoo flares up. And I said, that's interesting, because I have a tattoo of a ghost playing basketball, but from when I used to ghost hunt, uh, we had a joke about a ghost playing basketball, so I got a tattoo of it. And that's the only tattoo that flares up, like, the, the black ink will swell, almost. Uh, and anyways, so it's it's funny that it's a Jesus tattoo and a ghost tattoo that swells up more here but recording. But you caught EVPs recording, which yeah. I've not heard them yet. They're not... <laughs> one one I thought was an EVP, but it turns out it was just Dustin's stomach growling <laughs> while we were recording. Um, but yeah, we, every once in a while, I know during the Matt Squatch episode we had an EVP, but it's like a... Just, I can't make it out, and I don't have the equipment, or not the equipment, the uh, software to really manipulate it and everything. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we have, we obviously, we have a lot of experiences down here while we're recording. And I know I had talked about one time when I was down here recording and uh, my dog went kind of crazy. And that's another thing we talked about with the kids uh, experiencing more paranormal than than adults because, you know, you don't tell your dog, oh, well, there's no such thing as ghost chewy, you know, go back upstairs. But he, he was more reactive to it than than uh, I think most people. So I think dogs, that's another reason why dogs are more receptive to it than people as well. But, yeah, as far as ghosts go, I mean, I, I'm a ghost guy. I ghost hunted for 10 years uh, off and on, and I finally quit. And my issues didn't start until we actually started. Uh, we ghost hunted in a graveyard that had a witch and that was the first time I actually saw a uh, full-bodied apparition and everything like that and had uh, intelligent interaction with a ghost. Not the first time I had an inter- intelligent interaction, but it came with the full-bodied apparition. Um, but yeah, I know we're going to start doing that, husband. Uh, we're going to start uh, doing more ghost hunting on the show. So uh, Dustin's got a uh, connection. Got us a little connection. We've, we've been... We've already had. We have a formal invitation to tag along on a uh, investigation, and I'm sure we'll record it and put a YouTube video out of it. And I'm excited. I've never done official ghost hunting. All everything that's happened to me has been stuff that's happened to me in my life. I feel like we should be really serious with this music playing in the background. <laughs> but uh, like you know, at my house, I'll still hear. Uh, I hear a woman say my name. And that, that's been happening since mom died. <laughs> Did it say D-Train? That's D-train. Not what James said. <laughs> so let's talk to the ghost. Let's People at home, I know you've been super patient with us already as we kind of ramble. But what we're going to do, this is the part of ghost hunting that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it, that's the trick when you go like bear hunt or when you go out in the woods. You got to go with somebody who's slower than you, so you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just got to be faster than the person you went with. Hey, we went bear hunting in Canada on a bear hunting fishing trip, and my buddy shot a bear archery with with bow and arrow. It, he hit it above the he hit it around the spine, so it just paralyzed it. When they went back out looking for it, they found it was still alive. So they were trying to throw logs on it to like stab it and kill it well the bears started coming at him dude slipped and <laughs> fell oh no the, like one of the guides slipped and fell warrant the bear jumped on top of him and mauled his ass oh no you know this was in Canada so you know how that health insurance up there is it didn't go so well for that guy <laughs> the uh, 
<laughs> let's let's not get onto that whole uh, tear. But let's what we're gonna do, uh, patient fans of the show. We're gonna talk to the ghost. We're gonna try. Um, you know, obviously ghosts they do what they want to do. Uh, but we've got the ovulus going. It's going nuts right now. It's with the red. I don't know. So it's it's taking in a lot of information. Go Canada! But uh, <laughs> um, we're gonna try to talk to the ghost. We're gonna pretend as if it is a guest sitting on the couch next to. Uh, Hey, if, I'm telling you right Hannibal now. Burris over here. If you're a spirit in this house right now, scratch me. Last time I did this, I got scratched. I know you did. I, <laughs> I really remember. did. That was here, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, so there you go. That's another one. I forgot. I mean. Did you see that? Yeah. What was that? Um, <laughs> Mc, McKenna. Yeah, I, we were sitting here one day. I'm like, you know what? If you're if you're a ghost, and this scratch me, and it scratched my leg, right? Yeah. I had like three good scratches on my. And leg. then it said under, and then it said table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was on your leg. So. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have Dustin provoke the ghost here, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you bastard. <laughs> At least sit down like you have somebody sitting on the couch next. Okay. To you. And we'll. Uh, All right, buddy. How you doing? Do you want me to go open the box? Dude, if you want to, let's do it. Are you up for it? Oh, hell. Okay, so let, I'm going to tell you this backstory of what's about to happen here. There's a closet over here. Inside that closet is a locked box. He's never done this. There's a No, I've done it, and every time I open the box, weird stuff happens. Well, di- okay. So this is pretty crazy. Shut the lights off. So he has a box and it's full of stuff that he's taken from different investigations that he's done. He's going to open the box. Every time he's ever opened this box, weird things happen in his house. So I, he's never opened it with me here. So he's going to open it now. So this is going to be a live... The lights are off. This is going to be a live experiment. Are you going to bring it out here? No. I'm going to open it and I'm just going to let it happen. Okay. Okay. This is irresponsible, Dustin. I mean, if it's a bad idea, don't do it. Don't follow me home. I'll tell you that right now. So if you're watching, we've never done this, but he has a a legit box with artifacts in it that he's taken from different sites. So I'm kind of nervous. We'll see what happens. Don't be afraid, D-Train. The ghost of Scott Staff is here with us. I'm not... Huh? You ready? Uh, I'm ready if you're ready. Are you going to bring one of the objects out here? I am. What is that, a basketball? It is a basketball. Are you going to tell the story about it? I will. So there's one of the objects. Ah! (laughs) It moved on its own. So this basketball actually came from a, uh, it was a one-room schoolhouse in in south of Jamis before you, you know which schoolhouse I'm talking about. It's south of Monroe, right? Freeport? Uh, Well, it's between Freeport and Monroe, but there's a, there's a one-room schoolhouse uh, between Monroe and Freeport. And uh, I actually took this basketball from the basement that is allegedly haunted. So the chest is open with all the stuff that we took from uh, multiple ghost hunts. And uh, this basketball is one of the items. And uh, we're just, I think we're just going to carry on, right, with yeah. this right here, and we'll see what happens. Tell. The ghost just said tell. So what's the story with this schoolhouse? So what apparently happened, there was a kid, like typical, like what you would imagine. I don't know how much of it is true and how much of it is just urban legend. Uh, A kid had to stay after school and then the teacher brought him down to the basement, murdered him. And uh, and here's the funny thing about the school is I've never shied away from a ghost hunt. I've never had an issue with it. Uh, And I even I went to the schoolhouse, did the hunt took this basketball and then I brought a friend back I am chicken skin are you and I'm not even like scared 
<laughs> but I, I, the, I'm seriously um, getting chicken skin. It's drawing its energy. I mean, seriously, because I'm not even like scared or nervous right now. But my skin is so, look, my hair's standing up. Yeah, it sure is. It's seriously. I, I, I mean, I can feel like the energy in the room. The um, dude, me too. Dude, me too. I am too. But I went back to that schoolhouse with a different friend as we were passing through. We just happened to be passing through at the time. And I said, hey, you got to check out the schoolhouse. And it was nighttime. We pulled into the, into the, it's not even like a parking lot. It's like a gravel kind of parking area. And uh, as I was pulling in, I just felt eyes on me. And I felt so uncomfortable. Uh, And it was just, um... (laughs) The, it was so uncomfortable for me that I, I said, you know what? I was like, hey, this is a schoolhouse. Pulled right back out and drove away. Didn't even stop. Not even to turn. Like, I just did, like, a big U-turn. I didn't even stop and do a three-point turn. I couldn't couldn't bring myself to do it. But it, uh, it made me very uncomfortable. And I don't know why. But I think it was because I looked into the basement. Uh, and, that, and that's probably uh, what what did it for me. Anyways, that was the story about Gorgie. this basketball. I did play basketball while, uh, huh? I did play basketball in that haunted basement um, with with this basketball at the time. I mean, this is like a long time ago. Obviously, it's flat now. It's been sitting in a box or in a, in a chest uh, since I was a younger. So, what else we got, Jamis? You got any? Uh, you got any songs to send us off with? I, I can sure uh, figure something out. <laughs> what do you say you still laughing about? stuff that doesn't make sense just because it rhymes. Well, carry the fuck on. Oh, right. Um...
<laughs> that was a good song. No, it wasn't. I liked it. Especially the part about me putting my butt in a ghost face. <laughs> and asking him to cream on me. <laughs> I just, just kind of ran with it. Because, you know, what else is there besides, uh, you know, bringing you up at the end of a song? Well, that's how they all go. They, they all should end with me hey. doing something gay. Hey, feel this. Oh, yeah. His tattoo is raised right now. No, my other ones aren't like that. Mine hasn't kicked up. Or mine hasn't flared up yet. I have one hair standing up in my Adam. arm. Adam. Remember last time it said Adam? Yeah, it said Adam here before. So, Ghost, what is your what is your name? Is your name Adam? Give us a noise if your name is Adam. No, give us give us a noise. I thought I heard something, but give us a real noise. Give us a noise. If you're in this room right now, give us make a sound, make a noise. Louder for everyone in the back. <laughs> James scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> <He's> like, Louder. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Spirits of the Ouija right. board. Everybody's watching. Like everyone's listening. Real close. Everyone's waiting like, for it. Spirits of the Ouija board. How did you die? Do you know that you are dead? You gotta give him a second to answer. No, they got fucking answer my questions, man. He's not answering. Pick it up, Ghost. We're doing some live EVP on the Ovulus. Using Dustin as a... Oh, my, my son. son. Man, my tattoo is bumped up so bad. And how come James is, like, muffled? Are you close to your mic, James? No, he's passed out on the floor. Can, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Now you're back. We're trying to get this ghost to respond using this uh, ovulus here. And uh, this is actually a trigger object. Or my dog wouldn't interrupt you. From a haunted uh, schoolhouse that I took it from. So the ghost name is Adam. He was killed by his son, maybe? I don't know. Tell us more, ghost. I keep it, I, I'm looking behind us to see if I see a shadow walk behind us. Ah! How crazy would it be if all of our shit just drained? I don't know. I'd be the first one out of here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let you stay down here, hand you the basketball, and run. No, what's going to happen is I'm going to leave tonight, and all this crazy shit's going to happen to you. <laughs> I don't think the ghost is going to answer. <laughs> this is irresponsible. Watch, I'll forget to close the trunk up. No, you're going to close it before I leave. <laughs> That's going to be the first thing I You're going to close it before you leave, and you're going to you're gonna put your voodoo on me. So I'm going to go up, and I'm going to rub salt all over my naked body like don't touch me get off of me ghosts if we wanted to be really irresponsible we could take them into the closet with us and turn off the lights do you guys want to do that we'll take a vote if you want us to go into the closet and turn the lights off with you guys we'll do it if you think it's irresponsible then tell us if you want to go to the haunted storage room uh, with us, and we'll turn off the light, and we will hold the show in there for a few minutes. We're Let's in the burial it. ground. Let's we're in the burial ground. We are. Uh, we're, I mean, like it's we're up against it. I mean, yeah. we can get no closer to it. It's in my backyard. But uh, I mean, I guess if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Do we have like a flashlight or something? My phone. Yeah, we'll do that. But we gotta leave your thing on. Can you leave your thing on while we do it? Uh, let me try it. Alright, let's see what we can do here. 
I think this is stupid. I think this is stupid, and you're... No, it won't let me... Do you have any kind of flashlight at all? Yeah, it won't let me do it either. Um... Or I just won't put the obelisk up. Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> oh, this is retarded. Jameis, we're going in the closet. All right, I'll be here holding on the fort. Let's, move, let's make a fact, because if I'm wrong, I ain't tripping it. July 24th, 2018. The events that you've just witnessed are the last known footage of Tom and Dustin. All later released footage has been pre-recorded by the You Had Me at Bigfoot podcast team and released per request of their families. The audio in which you are about to hear is the only remnants recovered from what took place in that ghost room. It is unclear what is being said, but many people have their theories. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Tom and Dustin, please contact Kentucky State Police or your local authorities. That you had me at Bigfoot Podcast. Thanks you for your support. <laughs>